Yo guys, what's up? Everybody knows that scenic bases can make a miniature look really, really good and add an extra dimension to it. But what happens if, for instance, you have a base that's not the right size or you need one that the company you're getting the bases from doesn't make? As in the case of this Telemon, for instance, he needs a whopping 100 mil base and we've got a few problems. The biggest one is that this Telemon, which is the one that I'd previously done for the client, is on a very recognizable base, uh, and the company only make one base in this size. We ended up putting a miniature on the steps just to make it look a little bit more like there was something else going on, they were there for a reason, but we can't duplicate this. What we've done instead is we've grabbed this 100mm base that's got some sort of cobblestone floor in it, and we need to make it look like these. These are from Cyborg, and as you can see, they've got loads of detail. We've got these Greek heads that you can see on the previous bases, we've got these like runes and things, and of course we've got skulls because 40k. So the first thing we've done is we've bought a few elements that sort of belong to it. So this is a little plinth from Cyborg that's got some details on it. We've got some resin cast Greek heads that we're going to use. Uh, and then we're going to hopefully be able to use some of these as well, which was some of the leftover bases from the previous commission. We can trim the top off there. So we just throw a few bits of uh, scenery at the base, see what happens. And then we're going to get the saw out. We're going to take the saw and we cut the base off of this so we can use the top part of it where the detail is uh, as a uh, an element to our base. It took a little while, but, you know, get, get it done. We're going to take some of those Greek heads. We're going to start placing these around. And this stuff is just absolutely fantastic. This is some, uh, some bark that you'd find to fill a terrarium, stuff like that. It's very dry, uh, so it doesn't require like, any drying or anything at home, and it works great for providing a rock-like surface to your minis. I strongly suggest you pick some up. We've got some skulls from GW, so they're skulls set, and of course, because it's 40k, we're going to need a lot of these. And we got some super glue. We also need to use this stuff. This is some Vallejo Dark Earth Pumice. It's basically uh, grit and paint. Uh, and it's much, much cheaper than the GW version of this, their Astro Granite or whatever it's called. It's about £9 a tub for 200ml rather than £6 a tub for something like 24 So it works out about £40 cheaper. You can use it as glue, essentially, to start gluing things like this down, as well as, of course, our super glue for things like the resin elements. But essentially, this stuff works as like an all-purpose paste, filler, texture, you, know, you name it, it kind of does everything. And once you've got a rough idea of what to do with your base, you can start to attach these elements. So with a mixture of super glue and that pumice, get everything down. Once you've got everything in place, start filling in all those gaps around the bottom. So you can see we're just going around all of these elements, making sure they look like they've become part of the scene. We're embedding some skulls into it as well. Just to be sure we've got lots of detail, but we want to leave that nice place at the front for our talent to stand on. Don't want it to look completely barren of stuff though, so we've put down a little bit of texture paste here and there, making sure that we've got something that's going to be a little bit more than just that set of tiles. Next up from Rival Crafts, we're using three different sizes of particulate. We've got some big ballast, some small ballast, and this particulate sand. And all you need to do, essentially, is take one of them at a time, start with the largest particles to the smallest particles, and just sprinkle it on the base. The texture paste, that uh, pumice, will really just hold a lot of this down. You might lose a little bit through the painting process between this and an undercoat. It will weld most of this stuff to the base. Always work upwards in size from the largest stuff to the smallest stuff. That way you, you've got plenty of adhesion. Uh, and the final thing is this particulate sand. Now, this stuff is money. It's so good. Because it's such a very, very fine grain, it really works well with the scale of miniatures that we're working with. So 28 mil miniatures. This stuff does actually look like dirt rather than sand, which can just look a little bit like gravel. Once you're happy with everything that you've got, give it a good undercoat. We're using the Vallejo Matte Black Primer 2 to 1 mix with some airbrush thinner. It's about the only time I ever use thinners rather than flow improvers. Get a good solid coat of this everywhere on the base. Make sure you've got two coats down. If you feel you need it, get it done. Next up, we're taking some Cabalite Green and some Thramar Black. I'm going to start painting all of the faces. There's a really important reason we're doing this part first, which I'm about to explain to you about being a efficient with your painting. So I want to talk to you guys about efficiency. I've got seven dreadnoughts to do on bases very, very similar to these. And I want to get this commission done as quickly as possible so my client can have his toy soldiers ready. In this case, what we're doing is we're starting off with the darkest version of our green for the faces. And where we'd normally then, as a next step, highlight that upwards, we're going to completely change gears and move on to doing our gray. And we'll start with the brightest possible gray and work it down. 
There's a reason that we're doing both of these things in the order that we've got, and that is so that we can be as efficient as possible and get all of our airbrush steps done quickly without having to worry too much about the overspray. We're gonna make sure that our next steps correct any previously made mistakes during this process. Here's how. So we've got all our green down. You saw all of that being put down all over. Next step is of course getting that gray and we're using the brightest gray we're gonna take onto the miniature, which is Mechanica standard gray. Now while I'm putting this down in all the areas we want gray, I wanna to talk to you guys quickly about both Twitch and Patreon. We stream on Twitch four times a week, Tuesday, Thursday, and Sunday nights from 9 p.m. and Saturday mornings from 11 a.m. all times in GMT, where you can ask me questions on things like my thought process for this sort of thing, or where it's like some advice that you might want on a project that you're working on. Also on Patreon, every other week you get a full video guide just like this one, and every single week you get a written PDF style guide talking about exactly how we did the previous week's video, so you can get that written guide as well. Join in on either of those two and support both myself and of course the channel. Next up, we're highlighting all of these with just some straight up Cavalite Green because we used a mixture of that and the black earlier on. We can use this straight up now for all of our highlights. You wanna be careful to try and avoid as much overspray as possible, but if you do get a little, it's not the end of the world. Highlight the face in all the raised areas like you'd expect. So this goes back to what I was talking about earlier on with efficiency. We're gonna try and be as careful as possible to not get any overspray on the gray that we've put down, but it doesn't matter if we do. We've got two more stages at least to do on the gray before that's finished, and that's just the airbrush part of it. So if we do get any overspray there, we've got plenty of time to clean it up. It means that we can work quickly, we can work efficiently, and we can get our project done quicker. This means if you're prepping for a tournament or if you've just got a large batch of stuff that you wanna paint, you can use these techniques and this way of thinking about your project to get it done fast. So hopefully you guys are getting on board with the way that we're doing things here. As you can see, we've got something that already looks quite cool. We've taken basically just some component parts and taken it to this stage. So remember, you can do this with anything that you've got lying around in your bits box. The sky's the limit, guys. Work with whatever you've got make it as cool as you can make it look show me some examples come and join in on discord we'll put a link in the video description below and show off what you've got in the work in progress gallery we're coming in here with a second highlight on all of our faces and you see they're really starting to jump out from the rest of the scene that we've got here and come to life this is a really exciting base so here's where, so here's where things are really starting to pay off we took our darkest green and worked upwards so that when we can take our lightest gray as our base coat and work downwards with it. So some of the overspray from that green has got onto our gray, but we're taking the darkest version of that color now, which is giving us the easiest time to eliminate any overspray. And all we've got to do with it is spray the middle of all of the gray. We don't have to spray anywhere near the edges, which is where that overspray is likely to happen. So by doing it this way round, we're getting the quick path to that win. If you've got a time limit on what you need to paint, if you're in a rush or you just want to get your project done, start thinking about things like this. This is really going to help you speed your stuff up. So we're taking that mix of Mechanicus Grey and Thramar Black. We're just hitting the insides of all of those areas. We're hitting the bottom parts of things like that pillar that we've got going on there. And it's providing ourselves some nice shadows. We're now going in with just some straight up Thramar Black and we're accentuating those shadows. So we're just hitting some of these areas that we really, really want to make a little darker. We're also making sure that all of the areas of like uh, bare ground, so like the sand or whatever uh, other sort of quality stone you, you might want, gets hit with this so it makes our sort of final stages with the base a little easier to accomplish. We're trying to be as careful as possible not to get this on the green, but this is the only step we've really, really got to be careful. And you can see what a massive effect adding this shadow is having on this large pillar, for instance. Look at this little just cut in, this little V we've got just going on here. Look at how much more exciting that shadow is now. All of that starts coming to life. With all of the uh, the base area, like I said, we're making sure it goes down nice and solid all over it. And I'll show you why later throughout the video, but you can probably guess from the finished pictures you saw at the start what's going to happen with these. Next step, we're going to make some OSL 
on the runes on this base. Now, this is just an extra step my client wanted on the previous commission. We've carried it through to this one as well to make sure everything matches. We're taking a very, very thinned down Vallejo Fire Red, making sure we've got a nice sort of spread out corona of light on all of the areas that we want to put on the, uh, the sort of OSL side of the base. And we're only gonna do like four uh, parts of this. You don't wanna overdo it. Suddenly, if you do, the whole thing can become a little bit too much. So you can see we've got those three up the pillar there and that one uh, towards the foreground on the base itself. Next up, we're taking some Cadle Red. We've thinned this down very, very thin with some Flow Improver and all of the work we do here with the airbrush like that will have that. We're just hitting the middle of all of those spots. We want to make sure we've got quite a lot of that Fire Red pushing out the boundaries of this little uh, light source. We're adding in some Flash Gitch Yellow and we'll do two highlights with this. So the first one, we've got kind of like a, a dark reddish orange. Again, just going a little bit closer and closer into the middle and then the second one add more flash gets yellow in and just hit the centers of these areas next up we're going to go even brighter with this though i'm going to take some p3 menoth white highlight and we're just going to go straight back to those centers and this is that real kind of hot spot so this is that like absolute point of interest once this has gone on so be very careful it's in the right place right in the middle you're kind of committed to this being the brightest point uh, on our OSL. So we hit all of those with that. And then, because we want a slightly different finish on our uh, statue heads, we're hitting these all with a gloss varnish. It's going to give us two uh, benefits, actually. One is we're going to get a different finish. The second one is that the wash we put on here in a minute is going to really hit those recesses very easily for us. Speaking of washes, we're taking some Army Painter Dark Tone. We're going to thin this ever so slightly with water just to get it into the recesses around all of our paving slabs and stuff like that. So all those cobblestones, uh, all of the uh, the areas of the sort of runic tiles that we've got up around here, all of these need to be hitting with this. Around the OSL, make sure you're being very, very sparing with stuff like this. You, you really only want to just emphasize some of those dark recesses. You don't want to make the whole thing like black lined. And then we've thinned it even more for all of the, uh, the faces. So we've probably gone in something like a uh, three to two ratio with water, slapped it on all over there, watched out for any pools, but otherwise made sure that we've hit all of the recesses on the face mask and so on. Now we're going to get some highlighting done, and this is where you really don't need to, uh, to to worry too much about being precise, but just make sure you're hitting the right areas. So on the uh, the flat paving stones on the floor, we're going for the front edge here, as closest to the front of the base. Things like this, again, we're edging towards that way, but with the runes, you've kind of got to be a little bit more free flow with it. Just make sure you're getting something that looks right. You're not drawing big outlines around everything. When it comes to things like the rocks that we've made out of that bark, just a couple of rough, sketchy highlights towards the front will do the trick. End of the day, we've got a dreadnought stood on this. That's going to be the main focus, but all of these things really, really help to frame it well. Look at that pillar, for instance, the angel in the back there. A little bit of highlighting really brings it out. For the highlights on our OSL, we're taking some flash kits yellow mixed in with some Menoth white highlight from P3. Working at about a 50-50 ratio here, and we're just making sure that the areas around the middle uh, get a really nice bright point to them. We're going to add in some more of that Menoth white highlight and just get the absolute brightest points here and there. These are our focal points. These need to be like the hot spot of all of that light. And you can see that by the time that all of that has been done, this is really, really coming to life. It looks dark, it looks moody. We've got these nice grays and greens and then that really bright fire. Speaking of the greens, though, let's brighten that. Take some Cabalite green and some Sickly Skin, the same colors we used earlier on to highlight it with the airbrush. Now we're just hitting it with a little bit of a brushed highlight. We're making sure we take any of the areas of battle damage, like the cracks and the, uh, the scarring on these statues, these ancient things, and making them a feature. We're also just making sure that we've brought out all of the detail. So when you're highlighting, you generally want to make sure that you're pulling the detail out or you're enhancing a shape. Those are the two main reasons you're going to put a highlight down. Now you can see that all of these bits of statue have got a lot more going on with them. And now we're going to have a really long talk about pigment. So I want to talk to you for a second about 
pigments. Pigments are basically paint in a raw form. Uh, if you took medium or water and added it to this, you'd end up with paint. Um, but we can use them in their dry form really, really well for a lot of different things. Weathering being one of them, we've done a video on that. Uh, but basing is definitely where I feel they shine. You get a finish that is very realistic, looks like dirt or soil or a Martian forge world or some alien death world or whatever it is that you want to have your minis stood. In this case, we're gonna use them to create a nice varied ground effect that's gonna show off the greens and the grays in the bases that we've just produced. Couple of things to note. The first one, wear some protection, wear some PPE, uh, some description. Most of us have got a mask these days, let's be honest. The second one is that pigments are very messy. So make sure you're on your hobby desk and not your dining room table. Uh, and make sure you do a thorough cleanup afterwards. This stuff gets everywhere. Once you've done that, take a very old brush you don't care about and basically stipple it into your bases. Either you can like really brush it in there or you can like aggressively stab it in. If you feel that you're gonna need to get a uh, protective layer down, make sure you put a varnish on your miniature or on your base before you go to this step because you're not gonna wanna do it afterwards. If you seal the pigments in with anything, be it a varnish, be it some uh, isopropyl alcohol or anything similar to that, you will change the state that they're in. They'll go from being a dry pigment to being a wet paint, at least for a small amount of time. And that will change the way that they end up. So the finished product, I feel will look best if you don't fix them at all. Now, a lot of people will say, well, don't the pigments fall off? The answer is no, not really. Uh, you will get a little bit that comes off, but the vast majority of it will stay on your base. In fact, the knights that are in the cabinet behind me have had weathering put on flat plastic panels using just pigments, and it's still there more than two years later, and they've been transported all around the world for various tournaments and events. So pigments definitely don't need fixing. So you've seen what we've done while I was talking there uh, by applying these pigments. Now, like any kind of uh, paintwork, you can blend up and down. So we've mushed the pigments into each other. What I'm doing now is taking some ivory black, a very dark flat black, and we're just emphasizing the shadows on this. So by doing this, we're still creating that moody environment. We're also making sure that any of the areas that have been uh, like not touched by pigments have just got something on to make the, the whole thing a bit more uniform. You see just underneath there, we've now darkened that area down. It's got a lot more shadow, got a lot more depth to it and this base is looking great. We didn't film the skulls, by the way, how to paint those, but pretty much anybody can, can paint a skull. Bone color, a wash, bone, light bone, light bone, job's done. Hopefully you've enjoyed this video. Let me know in the comments if you do or don't. If you've got any feedback, I'd love to hear it. We'll see you on Twitch uh, and hopefully on Patreon as well. Subscribe if you haven't already. Take care, everyone.